It's been said that the only thing Yahweh fears is Leviathan. Why is that? For what reason would this be so? But before we answer that question, we have to understand who Yahweh and Leviathan are or represent. Yahweh is who most here in the West call God. What does that really mean? What does God mean? The truth is that word God has little meaning and paradoxically the ultimate meaning. When you hear that word, what do you think? Invisible man in the sky who made all things, an angry father who, who would kill his children just to make a point to teach them a lesson? Or is God the ultimate concept of consciousness, encompassing the all, all that is, for without consciousness, nothing exists? Or is God love? You hear that often, especially from hippies. Or does God represent your highest ideal, that which you strive to become both on the level of the ego and also the subconscious, the ultimate self? This is what that anthropomorphism, the Christ, is. He is the representation of the ultimate self in the flesh, thus making it simpler for the average person to understand that idea. The idea of the self, self with a capital S. Whatever your belief or opinion is concerning God, any and all representations of God fear but one thing. Now, the manifestation of Leviathan I'm referring to is not quite the same as the demon, not, not really. I'm speaking of something greater, more universal, more primal. For example, the struggle between Yahweh and Leviathan symbolically represents the struggle between the Sky Father and the Chthonic deities, which is common within Indo-European mythology and can be found in Norse, Babylonian, and Hindu traditions. Which is, simply put, the struggle between order and chaos presented mythologically. And in Christian mythology, as the serpent of the abysmal waters, Leviathan threatens to flood the world and swallow all of God's creation. He is not only the serpent out of the abyss, but the manifestation of the abyss, that which is most primordial. Let me repeat that. He is that which is most primordial. That right there might be the most important idea to remember. He is the deepest aspects of the primal psyche, the dark absolute personified. Just as within Hindu traditions, Brahman is the concept of consciousness, thus all other gods are aspects of Brahman, Leviathan is the concept of the abyss brought to form. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not presenting this because I have some bias for mythological sea serpents. Truth be told, I'm the founder of an international left empath organization called the Sect of the Horn God. So I, I think it's obvious which way my biases lean when referring to representational deities. And this brings us to the Jungian aeons or ions. I've done videos on this before in the recent past where I explained how the cosmic order appears to correspond with 2000 year long sociological currents. For example, there was the ion of Aries, the Ram, an ion of Nietzschean master morality in which Greek and Roman cultures rose. Then roughly 2,000 years ago, 
came Pisces, the twin fish, the first fish symbolizing the first 1,000 year rise of the Christ current, the second fish, the 1,000 years of the Antichrist. And I've hypothesized that the next ion, that of Aquarius, this current ion, is the ion or aeon of Leviathan. See my video on that topic for more details. But this hypothesis has been met with a measure of derision from some friends and colleagues. Look, I, I didn't choose Leviathan because I want it to be true. I'm just following some of the clues. Now, truth be told, I don't fully comprehend the connection between the collective unconscious and the cosmic realm. Could it be that all of reality is thought, all is mind, that consciousness and the universe are one? And that the universal psychological currents are thus synchronized with the cosmos, more so than the cosmos dictating the currents? I don't know. I do know this, though. There has been a sudden shift in the structure of reality, and don't tell me you haven't felt it. The worm has turned within the collective unconscious. But I digress. Now, getting back to the point, the main point of this video, the abyss, as in Christian theology and some aspects of psychology, is a symbolic representation of hell, destruction, and death. But for Nietzsche, it represented the ultimate depths of psychological complexity. Therefore, it could be a place of danger where we struggle to confront the darkest parts of ourselves, the Jungian shadow, also called the personal demon. However, Nietzsche also saw it as a place for growth and transformation. And from the Jungian psychological perspective, for the self to come about, one needs to assimilate the primordial psyche. That is, Leviathan needs to be assimilated at the time of the conscious realization of the self. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jung believed that the self is the unification of the conscious and the unconscious. And what he means by that is all aspects of conscious and unconscious, light and dark. For the past 2,000 years, though, the emphasis has been on the light, thus leading to a stark imbalance. But when you have come to the full realization of the self, we are then talking about that which is synonymous with self-deification or sinister illumination. This isn't simply saying, I'm my own God because I no longer believe in God. Because trust me, many of you atheists still abide by the ethics of Christian slave morality. I, I see you. It's about letting go of all those values and coming to the unquestioning realization that there is no God above you and that you shouldn't believe you're your own God, but you should know you're your own God. And if you are truly your own God, then, then what need have you for that God outside of you? Thus Yahweh becomes a victim of obsolescence. That's why he fears Leviathan. So, in conclusion, my friends, in this aeon of Leviathan, are you riding the current? Or are you being chaotically jostled about like a child swept up by a tsunami? The choice is yours, victor or victim. Pick one, but choose quickly because time is running out. 
until next time.